The Pixie 6K is arguably one of the best cameras to hit the market this year. And the best feature it has is ironically the least talked about as well. This feature is the live sync feature. Why is it that no one is talking about being able to upload your footage to the cloud within only three seconds of hitting the end button? Because this means you can be filming a project and a DIT or editor that's not on location with you can be editing that project at the very same time. This feature should revolutionize turnaround times and project collaboration. But if you don't know the proper workflow, then you won't be able to take full advantage of this. And if you think the only way that you can connect to the cloud and utilize this feature is through an ethernet cord, then you are unfortunately mistaken and you have undoubtedly been limiting yourself. So in this video, I'm not only gonna tell you about how to use this feature freely without the use of an ethernet cord, and I'm not just going to break down the workflow and accessing it, but I'm going to go a step further and actually show it to you. So I recently used LiveSync to give a client some of their content at wrap time, which is almost unheard of. In my last Pixis video, I tested out this feature with my friend Curtis, who lives in Georgia. I myself was currently in Tennessee, but the clips that I was filming were populating into the cloud within three seconds of ending recording. If you haven't watched that video yet and you'd like to check it out first, I'll throw it up somewhere around here. Now, while a ton of you were really impressed with this, a few of you did point out that while it does seem like a really cool feature, Plugging via ethernet cord doesn't seem practical for location work. And full bars, you're absolutely right. If you're not in a studio in a very controlled setting, shooting mostly on sticks, or maybe shooting on a Dana Dolly, then this would actually be really inconvenient and not worth it. But Blackmagic already thought about this. And that is why you can actually connect and have your files uploaded via hotspot from your cell phone. Now, if you're like me, you gotta be wondering just how dependable can hotspot be in this situation? With Ethernet, clips are uploading up to three seconds. But with Hotspot, how long will we be waiting? 30 seconds per clip? Three minutes per clip? I can't lie, I had my doubts, which is why I decided to test this feature out myself. So just a few weeks ago, I traveled to South Georgia to shoot some social content for Michelle's formal wear. This company is one of the most popular boutiques in the United States, offering wedding, prom, pageant dresses, along with tuxedos. I usually go in for a day of shooting, and I shoot with around four to six models, creating somewhere between 15 to 25 TikTok and real type videos, because I'm a real n So the plan was for me to shoot, and while I was shooting, my editor, who was back in Tennessee, would be editing the videos. I arrived on set at 8 a.m. and took about an hour and a half scouting the location and building out the camera. I decided to partner my Snyder lenses with the Pixis and run it on my RS3 Pro. Because if you saw my last video, thanks to this new body style, we can run this camera on gimbal with super beefy lenses. No diddy. And it handles that situation no problem. Using the side cheese plate attachment that comes with the Pixis, you can strap the phone on if you're shooting directly to a CF Express card instead of an SSD. Now an added benefit to using the phone is with me using a follow focus on the side of the gimbal, it becomes a little left heavy. So with the weight of the phone on the right side and also adding a 100 gram pound of weight, it balances everything back out. Now, I'm sure you also noticed I used a stupidly long cord going to the phone from Hotspot. And there's a very critical reason why I had to that I'm going to reveal later in this video. But for now, I started my first shot at 9.51 a.m. Meanwhile, my editor was on the Blackmagic Cloud site awaiting the videos to start populating. Here's a perfect time I like to mention two key things. One. Me and my editor worked primarily in Premiere, so he would have to download the clips and then import them into Premiere, which you actually won't have to do if you're working with DaVinci. Because if you're in Resolve, you can actually set things up to where the files will upload directly into the project on the Media tab. So, yeah, uh, that's a win for DaVinci. I might need to take that old video down. Now, the second thing is something I know several of you have been wondering. How much is this feature going to cost you to take advantage of? Well, for most of you, it actually won't cost you a thing because when you sign up for Blackmagic Cloud, you automatically get two gigabytes of storage, which may not sound like much, but the proxies that are uploaded from the Pixis are only one megabyte per filmed second. So to explain, if your clip is 30 seconds long, that's gonna take up 30 megabytes of space. If it's 100 seconds long, that's 100 megabytes. Before shooting the project, I had around 50 clips sitting in the cloud, which was only occupying 550 megabytes. And after shooting for eight hours on this project, I'd used a little over a gig of my space, which I didn't need once the project was finished and handed over. So I cleared that space and now I'm back to two gigabytes. Because I'm not working on features and I'm mostly shooting social media type content and very controlled music videos, the way I'm doing this is fine for now. But if you do need to have more space, you can get 500 gigabytes for only $7.50. And if you want more than that, $15 will get you a terabyte. $30 for two, and so on and so forth. 
And hey, if you got a bag and you rich, go ahead and get you a PB. Whatever PB stands for. I don't like that. That sound too close to pedal. So my first clip I was done shooting at 951, and with the hot spot, it was uploaded to the cloud by 954. My second, I shot at 953, and it populated into the cloud for my editor at 957. I continued to monitor it for the next few scenes, and from what I was consistently getting, videos were being loaded up between four to six minutes, with my longest clip being around 55 seconds long. Not too bad for me. To be honest, I swore that using the hotspot for loading footage was going to be so slow, it wouldn't be worth it. But that wasn't the case. And I have to mention, I wasn't even in a 5G location either, so it's possible it could be even faster. But you had to know a butt was coming. Like I've always said, nothing is perfect, and this feature is no different. It happens to have two major issues at the moment. Two flaws that when fixed, if fixed, will make it perfect. But before I reveal what those are, if you've been enjoying this content and would love to see more like it, please hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell to keep up to date with all of my content from reviews to behind the scenes to gear giveaways. Okay, now that that's out of the way, the first flaw is probably the lesser of the two. One of the reasons these proxies are uploading so fast is because the Pixis is creating 1080 proxies. So if you're shooting in 4K or 6K, uh, 6K open gate, whatever, your proxy isn't going to have the same dimension. In post, that's not usually a humongous problem because you can just opt to scale to frame size. So then when you switch out the clips, the size of the original footage won't change. But in my situation, this was an issue because we were shooting real style content. So 90% of the time, I had the camera turned on its side. Scaling the frame size in this situation doesn't work, so it made things a little more complicated for us. Now, I completely understand that if the dimensions matched, it would change how quickly the proxy uploaded because the size of the file would change, but I do wish we at least had the option to choose the dimension size of the proxy. Unfortunately, we don't. It's 1080 by default. Now, that's not a huge issue for most, I think, but the second issue is a major issue. <sighs> okay, the problem is the 6K Pixis seems to not work with any phones utilizing USB-C connection. Meaning, I couldn't use either an iPhone 16 nor my 15 to utilize Hotspot because the Pixis did not recognize it. At first, I thought it was because of my cord, but after trying tens of thousands of different cords, okay, more like 20, but that's still a lot. And making sure I was in a 5G area in case that was the reason it wasn't reading, which that shouldn't be the reason, it still didn't work. That is, until we connected it to an iPhone 12, and it worked instantly. We then tried it with a 14, which, also worked immediately. So for some reason, the Pixis is not recognizing newer iPhones. And that's kind of weird. I would understand if it wasn't working with older iPhones, but it's not working with newer iPhones. I don't know if this is something that can be fixed with a simple firmware update or what, or maybe I have a faulty Pixis or something. I don't know. You guys let me know in the comments when you get a chance to try it because I really do love this new feature. Oh. Yeah, I forgot. This feature isn't limited to just the Pixis. With updates, it's available for our older Black Magics as well. But rigging your phone with it is going to be a little challenging. So I'm ready to see y'all's Black Magic 6K full frame iPhone hotspot rig. Show it to me when you get it. Because it's going to be a challenge. Urgent announcement. Super crazy thing. All right. Quality on this is terrible because. I can't use any of my cameras for what I got to show you. I got the Blackmagic Pixies here. I got my 6K here. And then I got my phone because I I didn't think about, think to test this, but the USB-C hotspot is working with the original 6K, but not the Pixies. So let me show you here. Turning the camera on. All right, camera's on, right? Now, when you plug your phone into the Pixis to run hotspot, what will happen is it'll ask your phone, do you trust this computer? After you confirm that you trust the computer, then your name, oh, my bad. Then at the top where you see my name, Steven, it should be blue. Well, I plug it in. Nothing. Pixis isn't recognizing it. Like I said, it works with an iPhone 12, it works with an iPhone 13, 14, anything that's using a lightning cable, but it doesn't work with anything that's using the USB-C to USB-C. But check this out. Let's move it out the way because you can utilize the same feature with the 6K. Again, I don't know how we're going to go about mounting it, but y'all geniuses will figure it out. Let's turn the camera on. 
and let's plug it into the USB-C port. What? So I'm thinking this should be an easy fix. It must be like a firmware update that's needed or something. Maybe Black Magic just doesn't know this is going on. I'm up to date. I have the the newest uh, firmware version on the Pixie. So this has to be something that they're not aware of. Now, real quick, I need to mention a couple of more quick things that makes me love this feature. One is that you can actually set it up in your pictures to upload the original clips as well as the proxies. Now I haven't tested this yet to see exactly how long it'll take the original file to upload, but of course you know I'm gonna test it out soon. And lastly, which I think is kind of cool, may aggravate some people, if your proxies haven't uploaded to the cloud, then the camera won't allow you to format the card, which is a nice safety bonus. Oh yeah, and I forgot, my client, Michelle's Formalware, it normally takes us two to three weeks to get her content. Utilizing this feature, we got it to her in two days. She had all 24 visuals in 48 hours. It's crazy. I gotta reiterate, the Pixis is a camera to be reckoned with. But having a great camera means nothing if you don't get this other part down.